Another week, another wonder, another comment for us. What's up, guys and girls, Koopas and Kamex? We are here with the 14th episode of The Greatest Show on YouTube. I'm your host, Zach. I've got Jake and Gabe here, and we are going to read you through a bunch of your comments, a bunch of your thoughts, a bunch of your ideas, a bunch of your questions, and find out who is the greatest hero of them all. I have two questions. <laughs> yes. One, what wonder happened this week? You said another week, another wonder. So what was the wonder? Uh, Gabe, you had a very special assignment and event that we cannot talk about. That was the wonder. Yeah, I don't even know why you would bring that up. The other question is, why do you think this is the greatest show on YouTube? <laughs> why do us. I think that? Let me let me tell you. I will all tell right. you by the first comment this right. week. Okay. Uh, by the way, before we get to that, thank you so much for all your comments. We love the feedback, the community we're building. It's so crazy to see a video go up and then two, three, four, five, six hundred comments within a matter of hours. So shout out to all of you out there free pencils and what do they give out in Halloween now? Pencils, erasers, uh, lo, uh, do they spinners. Do, what, are, what are those spinners that everyone's obsessed with now? Yeah, like, I saw those the other day. Someone <laughs> had one at the park where I go play basketball and I was like, what the hell is this thing? The children were going crazy. They're like, oh dad, I want one. I want one. I'm like, what? This thing makes no say, like no sense. It's like an ugly looking Beyblade. Like, no. I thought you were going to say it made no Saget and I was like, nope. Bob Saget is probably beyond the time of most. Mm -mm, Street Fighter Saget. No. Oh, uh, that's, gotcha. that's, that's Sagat. Oh, Gabe with the, the pronunciation lesson, but Gabe is not featured in the first comment, at least initially, because it's from Zach and Jake's non-existent fan club, who says, awesome Switch Force out, Gabe, and I feel a type of way about this, because when I first saw this comment, I was like, great, someone made a Zach and Jake fan club, and then I realized that it's our non-existent fan club, so it's basically Gabe's second fan club. <laughs> And then Gabe's fan club comes back and says, was just about to say the same thing. Hey, who are you, by the way? Haven't seen you on this channel before. <laughs> Zach and Jake's non-existent fan club said, no one who is or ever will be important. And then Sensai Jack says, Switch Force Civil War, SFCW Team Gabe. And then Gabe's fan club says, hashtag Honest Gabe, hashtag Sack Zach, hashtag Take Jake Out. <laughs> then Not Gay Steven says, hashtag Team Jake, time to Jake out the trash. I don't think like that's very <laughs> positive about me at all. <laughs> No. Time to Jake out the trash. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna Jake out the rest of the trash, like Gabe and me, I guess. That, and that then, tickled me. That tickled me. Lauren Northern, rounding out uh, just the ensemble, says, "Quit your bickering. This is exactly why everyone should be Team Zach. You all are just annoying." <laughs> and this was my favorite thread of the week. It's very. This intense. was a funny one. This was a very funny one. I, I I brought it to your attention at first because I thought that Zach and Jake's non-existent fan club was was a, maybe that's the wonder for the week. That that's such a great account. Whoever you are, we, we we enjoy what you're doing out here. I just like that they made me excited that we had a fan club, and then psych, it's a non-existent one. But yeah, no. All right, Jake, move us along from the civil war of ourselves. All right, Hayden Tolne says, when will you have merch? And if you do so plan on doing that, have you thought of making Switch accessories for us to buy? That'd be quite the endeavor. To um, make we don't know how to make Switch, Switch accessories, first of all. Um, so I Merch think is much more possible, though. Yeah, yeah, like, we can, we can sell you shirts if you want, but, yeah, as far as Switch accessories, yeah, we don't have manufacturing or, or, or any real know-how um, as far as that goes. Um, but shirts, we sold shirts once before. Um, Zach, you want to talk about that? Yeah, they were. it was a limited edition uh, Switch launch week, Switch Force launch shirt. And we're looking at, uh, if you guys want, we're looking at having a, another shirt, sort of a um, mainline Switch Force shirt that would be available perpetually. Uh, and then maybe doing some more special event shirts around big game releases that could be uh, themed and, and colored uh, to, to match the release. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely let us know, either here or throughout the week, and we can make that happen. In terms of Switch accessories, I would love that. Maybe if we magically hit a million subscribers, we can convince Nintendo uh, to make a Switch Force mold for their Joy-Con. But until well, then... Even then, that probably <laughs> wouldn't happen. Okay, if we get a million subscribers, I will personally make Switch Force Joy-Con and sell them. Yeah, okay. All right, sure. There we go. Mojtaba Mortada says, we need F-Zero. And then we have a reply from just a little nebby. Nebby? I was going to say nebby, but there's no second either. Whispers Punch-Out. So F-Zero and Punch-Out. Uh, what do we think of those two, like, long dormant franchises? Punch-Out was, was around on the Wii, so... Um, we've That's had one that. of my favorite Wii games. Yeah, we've had that more recently, but F-Zero hasn't been around for quite some time. And uh, a lot of people seem to really, really want it. Uh, I got my, my fill of F-Zero-like action with Fast RMX, um, but, you know, an actual F-Zero game that is, like, sanctioned by Nintendo could be very, very cool. Yeah, I think 
You know, it's like, we, we look at, okay, we got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, so Future of Racers on Switch, Mario Kart 9, Diddy Kong Racing, you know, some remix of that. Double F-Zero. Dash 2? That's not happening. <laughs> you don't, how do you know that? Double Why Dash would they go 2 quadru- Quadruple Dash. Four cars, four four racers per car. Yeah, two two item throwers. Two. It's 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 like the family racing game. Yes. Beautiful. Speaking of man, I can't. Oh, man, oh man, oh man. All right, stay tuned, guys. I can't. Uh, personally, I would like a new punch out because I thought the one on Wii was executed awesomely. I love that game. I love the skill. Required. Well, you're in luck. There's a game called Arms coming out. Okay, hey, that's actually a good point, Jake. <laughs> Not a not a bad point. I, 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 I feel like Arms is a little more sporadic than Punch Out, where Punch Out is much more of a like timing, like an, an exercise in a, extreme skill, whereas Arms is more of like a party fighter. I don't like Maybe. that you said that. Maybe it's not more of a party fighter. Maybe it's more of a hardcore fighter. But to me, in my head, I guess I just think of like how hard it is to to beat the original Punch Out, and the Wii one was nowhere near as difficult, but it did bring challenge. So to me, both of these games, why they fit nicely together, is because they're two of the more challenging Nintendo series. And I guess that's where my question I throw it back to to you guys is: Would Nintendo ah bring you threw it that- too hard? Oh, oh no, okay, that didn't resonate with you. I'm sorry, lame jokes. Eh. You I get threw it too hard. Yeah, he said I'm gonna throw it back to you guys, and I said, ah, you threw it too hard. Okay, whatever. I missed. Gabe's learned. <laughs> Gabe's learned some new comedy on his travels. Um, but I think that they're. I want to know if you guys thought that they the, are these two hardcore franchises for them to bring to the Switch. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't call them hardcore. I, I mean, I guess. I just feel like they have stuff that's overlapping, like Arms and Fast RMX and Mario Kart. So like, I feel like they're more focused on things like the Mario RPG or Mario Odyssey, like more diverse games as opposed to just doubling up in a way with um, like Arms and Punch-Out or Fast Arm X, Mario Kart plus F-Zero. You know what I mean? Like, Because then that's more Nintendo IP that's all like kind of overlapping as opposed to like a third party. Like, it's like a so third you feel party like they're going to spread the genres. Yeah. Especially okay. coming from all the same like source. You know what I mean? Like they're like, so j- Nintendo's going to make Arms and Nintendo's going to make Punch-Out. It's like, well, why are you wasting your efforts on two different games that are like similar style or like similar genre? Yeah, but then yeah. They, they had New Super Mario Brothers and they had Donkey Kong both on Wii U, and those are similar. So but those I, I are like, all right. I so, guess I, I would I would say F Zero probably would fit better alongside Mario Kart than Punch Out alongside Arms. All right, so so let's just answer this uh, in, in this manner, and then we can move on to the next question. Zach, do you think we get an F Zero game? Yes or no? No. Do you think we get a Punch Out game on Switch? Yes or no? I don't need a, need a no explanation. E-sh- here, buddy. E-shop punch out. Okay. All right, Jake. Do you think we get an F Zero game nope. on Switch? Do you think we get a punch nope. out game on Switch? I think we do get an F Zero game on Switch. I do not think we get a punch out on Switch. There we go. All righty. S W D S Airsoft says, "Dear Switch Force, do you think we are going to finally see media apps like YouTube and Netflix in the near future? Thanks and keep up the good work." Absolutely. This is something that that has gone away, and I wanted to bring it back into the uh, stratosphere of our minds. At now having the Switch, you know, for two plus months, how you feel on how you wanting video and uh, internet type apps? I don't want it or care for it at all, but it's coming. I mean, Reg- Reggie confirmed it. Like, it's being worked on. I'm, uh, maybe they even mentioned it at E3. Like, at some point in the Switch's lifespan, you will have YouTube and Netflix on it, yes. I don't yeah. care for it, though. I mean, yeah, I guess it's not like a huge deal to me since we all pretty much all have smartphones on us all the time. So you can, you know, use that for media apps like this, but I guess it's a nice feature to make the Switch more of an all-in-one. I see it being used more docked, like on your TV, because I, I don't know, again, if you're traveling, I don't think you're going to want to chew into that battery with Netflix. And also, that, that screen is great, like your phone screen is probably better than the, than the Switch's screen. Like, the, the, the 720p is like great for like the games that we're playing sometimes, yes, but like to watch like Netflix and YouTube, like sometimes you want to watch, like if you have a phone on you that already does like 1080p or 4K, like sure. why why would you like one a kill your battery on the switch and b like watch it in 720 instead of 1080? Yeah, so definitely coming. Personally, I don't think. I guess group wise, I don't think any of us are are really going to be using these. But it's nice to round out and just make it seem more like a fully fleshed out ecosystem. And and I guess that presents more of a comparison, you know, with other options out there. And I guess for like kids or something, if you like who don't have a smartphone and you want them to. Like keep them occupied with video games or TV or something. I don't know. Speaking of kids or kind of kids, 
Nathan Cooper says, I am a college student and I have three friends over to work on a group project. One of them saw my Switch and we spent the rest of the evening playing Mario Kart and Stepper Clips until 2 a.m. on a school night. Thanks, Nintendo. I feel like that's, like, <laughs> kind of backhanded, but this is something that I feel like I would do. <laughs> and, yeah, or game I like that do. we got a, another, like, real world example of how Snipper Clips is bringing the world together and also ruining uh, the future of America's youth. <laughs> that happened way before this. <laughs> now, Nathan and his friends may not may not score high enough on their exam to become the, the minds of our future, all because of freaking Nintendo and Snip and Clip. Mm, don't blame Snipper Clips for anything. Gabe, I wanted, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. if you were in college right now, okay. do you think you would be the one bringing the Switch to the party, or would you be going to the parties with the Switch? Like, would you be the, 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 the bearer of the good news, or would you be the receiver of the good news? No, I'm, I'm definitely bearing it. I, I got it. I got it. Gabe, I got Gabe bears it all. I got the hookup. Gabe, I want you there to have, no part, like... There is no part... I want you to have, like, those things that they have, like, the E3, where, like... Yes. It's, like, it's yes. tethered to your chest, and then you have Why people play. Why my chest? Why can't well, like, or, or your arm. waist or whatever. I'm your chest is the most attractive part of your body. I'm tethering it to my arm. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. It's gonna be heavy on your arm. A switch stapled to your arm? No, just the tether's gonna be around my wrist. I can still hold it. No, no, it has to be attached to your body. Oh, what you whatever. All right, next one, uh, Jake. I'm gonna have you double up on this because this is a very important and relevant to you. Okay, Jake's fan club says, "Don't worry, Jake. We are here. We will take over Toad Town and we will rise with Dry Browser and Bowser's Castle." Now, I really appreciate this, <laughs> but I don't appreciate the fact that it's Zach's picture with my fan club. It makes me sad that my fan club doesn't even know which one's me. That's how you know that they're not real fans. These are some imposters that want to piggyback off the success of Gabe's fan club and the special bond that we have. So you guys start this fake stuff, and obviously, they don't even know who you are. So, no. Well, my question is, do they think that I am Jake or that you are me? That's the real question. Like, is this supposed to be Zach's fan club, but they think my name is Jake? Or is this supposed to be Jake's well, fan I mean, club, they think they you know are me? they know that I play as Dry Bowser. So that's oh, me. Okay, so so they, it definitely is you, but yes, we do look alike. But that is me, and I think at some point we're gonna have to update these photos yeah. to be more photorealistic. Yeah. Well, mine's close, ish. In the meantime, Gabe is gonna talk to us about short burst gameplay. Zelda Breath of the Wild slash Ocarina of Time says, "Do you think future Nintendo made Switch games will have a short burst gameplay like Shrines in Breath of the Wild? I fear future Switch games." will have that type of gameplay. A quick 5-10 to 10 minute uh, star in Mario or a quick side quest in Xenoblade 2 handheld uh, type games when the Switch is both a console and a handheld and some gamers may want deeper experiences. Thanks. What I liked about this and what I wanted to bring up was do you think that developers in Nintendo, like, is the Shrine style, do you feel like that is specifically tailored for the Switch and will we see Nintendo's mainline franchises evolve in ways they're tailored for, like, the knowledge that it can be taken on the go and, and have that burst-type gameplay. I'm sure it's a consideration for developers, but I don't I don't believe that... First of all, I, I believe that Zelda Breath of the Wild is a deep experience. Uh, this person is saying Absolutely. they want deep, deeper experiences. There's nothing shallow about Breath of the Wild, in my opinion. Um, but other than that, a lot, of, a lot of Nintendo franchises have already been doing this for a very long time. Uh, Mario levels don't take that long to, to, to finish. Uh, Donkey Kong uh, Country levels don't take that long to finish. So, I mean, the other thing is if it's done well, like it's done in Breath of the Wild, why does it matter? That, but, I mean, I can kind of see what he's saying. I think he's saying, like, hey, he kind of wishes they would have invested more in, you know, deeper, more complex dungeons and areas versus 120 of these small, cool ones that do cater. Because, like, Shrines are kind of what I go to when I'm on the go, right? Like, that's kind of the quick burst gameplay. And I think Odyssey uh, is going to be the real interesting one because on one hand, y it looks like they're doing the opposite of this because they could have done another Mario 3D World, which is bite-sized burst levels, but instead they're going back sandbox style, which would be a deeper, more fleshed out experience. Now, if the stars are really easy and really short and quick to get, that'll be telling. But to me, I think Odyssey actually proves the opposite of what Zelda uh, B-O-T-W-O-O-T is saying in that 
both kinds of experiences can coexist because they are throwing a, a fleshed out sandbox style Mario instead of a level base like you mentioned, Gabe. Yeah, but I also don't, again, I also don't think that Breath of the Wild isn't fleshed out. So I, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't agree with this comment at all. Well, and I, I don't know that it was the shrines were a product of the Switch nature. I think it was more a product of the open world nature of Breath of the Wild. Like, they didn't, I don't think they went in like, oh, let's make tiny things because it's going to be on a handheld system. I think they needed to have more spread out things because they had a gigantic map and they weren't going with the typical um, dungeon setup of going from one dungeon to the next. So they had to have something spread out through the land that you could invest in as opposed to having giant dungeons that you go from one to the next. So I think it was more product of the open world nature of Breath of the Wild than the nature of the Switch. I do hope they dive into some of the stuff we've talked about where they have some like more handheld specific eShop specific games that then could take advantage of that in the same way that they did on, on DS and 3DS. I don't know that, you know, your Mario's and your Zelda's and your Xenoblades need to do that. But if they did say, you know, do a a more handheld style Zelda or a more handheld style Mario or just games in general that took advantage of that, a, a WarioWare eShop, you could cater more to that portable style without having to totally like override your your traditional triple a deep experiences so interesting points and ones to uh to consider in the future uh zazan man gaming says i've noticed that everybody has completely forgotten about super bomberman r pretty much a few days after it was released i mean maybe that could be good because it could cause a price drop but who knows and i want to ask you guys are there any games from the early switch days that you have completely forgotten about and are either glad you did or wish that you would go back to now i haven't played snipper clips since we did that you know, uh, like me and Gabe and me and you did those couple levels. So I'm sad that I haven't gone back and done more snipper clips, especially like World 3 and stuff like that. We have never done. Um, Super Bomberman uh, uh, um, sold well. So first of all, I, I want to throw that out there. The game did well for, for Konami. Um, I guess probably Fast RMX. Like, I, I like the game a lot. I just don't play it. Um, I still play snipper clips sometimes, so I definitely haven't forgotten about that. Um, I, I, I struggle to, to think of too many other launch games that, that I, I had very much interest in. Um, for me, it's Snapper Clips. I, I wish and want to play more of that. I think it's sometimes tricky. Like, we are trying to always be on the, the cutting edge of what's the, the newest release and the newest game and the newest news, and sometimes that causes things to get caught in the back shuffle on the back burner. But Snapper Clips is one that I really would like to return to. And I think if you're a new Switch owner... Don't forget about that launch day lineup. Some people said that it was, you know, really, really bad. But outside of Zelda, there still were a few great ones, like Snipper Clips, like Fast RMX, and, and even Bomberman R, it, for, for some people, clearly, is a really fun time. Guzo Limu says, God bless Calvin Force for making my yard work bearable. That's... I'm glad we could help ease your pain of having to work outside. I, yeah, I what can, kind of yard work do you like? Oh, I don't like any of it, but I can relate to this. <laughs> Um, ba back when I was much younger, I used to like do like work stuff outside. I used to do a little bit of yard work myself, and uh, I was lucky that I always had a podcast with me. So I can definitely relate to having a, a, a audible entertainment of some kind to, to keep you distracted from all those ugly noises, the very loud noises <laughs> of like lawnmowers or, or weed eaters, whatever it may be. So I, I relate. I know what it's like, and uh, bless you for for doing the yard work in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I I was a I was a, a lawnmower boy, so I would always mow lawns, and it's loud, and I didn't have any like noise canceling headphones, so I remember just taking my like Apple earbuds and like always trying to like push them deeper into my ears so that I could hear uh, the podcast. I would listen to One Up Yours and GFW Radio uh, and the cheap ass uh, the CAG cast while I was mowing the lawn, and that always made things go so much speedier. So kind of cool that we can do that for you. All right, we have another lovely comment here from um, Miss. Oh gosh, how am I pronouncing this? Mr. Cindatoast. Mr. Cindatoast. Oh, I thought it was Miss. Okay, Mr. Cindatoast. Okay, sorry. Uh, no matter how bad a week I may have, I can always look forward to the comment force. Uh, I think the three personalities mix so well and provide a funny and positive video. I just want to say thank you for making me laugh and giving me something to look forward to. Toad for president. Well, now that you said that, we're canceling comment force. You're never gonna hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> greatest no. hashtag yet terrible hashtag but yeah I, I'm glad <laughs> toad, that is Force... toad is basically already our president I'm glad 
<laughs> I'm glad that Comet Force has uh, evolved into like one of the coolest and, and like favorite things. It, it's definitely our favorite thing we do, so I'm glad that it, it's one of your favorites as well because it's something that started off as like, hey, let's just read some comments, that'd be fun. And now, to me, this is one of my most look forward to, uh, one of the moments I look most, look more, holy word. The sentences are the, difficult, people. One of the moments I look the most forward to in my week. Yeah. It's fun stuff. It's That's, really great. Except when somebody says hashtag Toad for President. No, we we appreciate that. Me and Jake are secretly high-fiving uh, underneath the stratosphere. Gabby Choopy comes in with an idea and a, and a thought that I think is really interesting going forward, saying, Some rumors say that VR is coming to the Switch. I imagine a VR Metroid game, also a VR Star Fox game. They tested new things with an open-world Zelda. This should be the time to test new things, like bringing back all series, making old Nintendo fans ready for fresh new ones. Uh, also, I have a wish list for games I want for the Switch, and they seem to think that VR would be the way to make that happen. And we've heard some, like, rumblings of this, Nintendo doing some R&D on the VR spectrum. I just kind of wanted to, uh, you know, at this point in time, do we think that VR will ever come to Switch, and do we think it could be an interesting fit for, for some Nintendo properties? I just no. Was, I, go ahead, Gabe. No on all fronts. No, I don't think it's coming to Switch. No, I don't think it would be interesting. Like, look at the current VR market. We have Oculus. We have uh, the HTC, what, what's that going to call? Vive? Vive, yeah. Uh, we, we have uh, PSVR. Sure, they did well at first, just like sales-wise, because I don't want to call it a gimmick, but because of the gimmick of, hey, this is VR, it's a new way to play. And I think the future of VR in non-gaming is is very, very bright. I I just think maybe it's it's not the time. Or maybe it's going to be great in video games, too. It's just not the time now. Um, no one cares. Uh, I'm, here, let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. I do not see like any rampant excitement for anything VR-related now that there is um, some uh, time removed from the launch of these things. Uh, like, when's the last time you, you have all three of these? Um, yeah. and, and, and except very specific examples that we that I'm, you know, I won't mention here, when's the last time you played a VR game because you wanted to play a VR game? I because don't... Yeah, I, I personally prefer the traditional gaming experience, and... You know, I think the Switch is a unique experience in itself, right? Like, that's a unique way to experience gaming with the hybrid console. I do think that Nintendo has a history of liking to try things, and I wonder if they would do it just for the sake of their own intrigue, right? Their own desires. And, you know, we're going to see Scorpio most likely partner with Oculus, uh... At E3, you've got PSVR, as mentioned, Vive, and, and Oculus for, for PCs. I think not now, but I could see in the future Nintendo trying to incorporate something. I don't know how the heck it works with the Switch, so maybe it's not even a Switch type thing. Maybe it's a, a next platform thing, but personally, I don't really care for it. But I, I do wonder, since Nintendo, look, motion control, they kind of led the charge there. 3D, without glasses, they led the charge there. It would be probably more weird if they didn't ever try VR than if they did. But maybe it does depend on, like, how this stuff all uh, shakes out, right? Like, if VR continues to kind of drop off sales and success-wise, maybe Nintendo does realize it's an idea that, that should be scrapped. I think it could still be very cool to be a part of the Mushroom Kingdom or, like, race in Mario Kart VR. Like, it would be gimmicky, yes, but it would be fun. I just don't see in, in the near future because like, Oculus is, is cool and fun, but like it requires so much setup and so much space that I don't know how the heck you would transfer that technology over to just the Switch. So I don't see how they can make it work well with the specs and tech that they have with the Switch right now. Would you like this? Like, would you? Is there a game series, a Nintendo series, you'd find fun in VR or think would be cool? Mm, I think they'd have to come up with something new and make it like actually function well to, to make it enjoyable not like some weird gimmick like you're in the front seat of mario's car driving through and it's like a weird test track type endeavor but um you yeah, know i mean and they, they did kind of go away from 3d i mean look hey pikmin doesn't even use 3d they're doubling down on a new 2ds instead of a new new 3ds so maybe nintendo is kind of more they have a new president maybe they are going back more towards a core uh style 
Who knows? We'll see. But I think I think it will be interesting to see how VR plays out in general for gaming. On to Oiska G, who says, I haven't heard you guys talk about Fire Emblem Warriors very much, and I'm really excited for it. What do you guys think of it? The reason we haven't spoken about it very much is because what do we know other than it exists and that it's coming this year? Like, we haven't seen a bunch of it, have we? I mean, basically we're assuming it's going to be Hyrule Warriors with FE characters. Um, sure. And but... I guess I guess that's the first question. What did you guys think of Hyrule Warriors, and how does that inform your excitement for, for Fire Emblem Warriors? Unfortunately, I only played it at, like, E3 or PAX once, so that's I can't really speak on that. Yeah, I, I mean, and Dynasty Warriors-type games are not, like, traditionally my favorite. Um, Hyrule, I, I didn't, like, play, really, so I I can't speak on it. Um, I fully intend on playing Hyrule Warriors sometime soon, just so I can understand the style of the game a little more, but, um, yeah, the reason I, we don't I, you, speak You guys aren't really big into Fire Emblem, that's, that's probably the main reason. Well, I used to love Fire Emblem a long time ago. Okay. I, it's fallen out, uh, fallen out of favor uh, with me recently, and, and not because the series is doing anything I don't like, um, just because I don't have a 3DS anymore. My 3DS broke, and I well, I broke it. It didn't break on its own. Um, I broke my 3DS, and I never like got one, and I lost it. Something like that happened. I don't even, I can't even tell you to be honest. I, I either lost it or I broke it. One of the two things happened. The witch took it. The witch might have taken it. So um, I, I'm excited just based off the fact that it's going to be a, a big new game for Switch. And of course I'll be playing it, so... Uh, yeah, I'm excited, but even then, like, we have, like, limited knowledge of what it is. Like, so, I don't... I think it'd be interesting, like, almost... Not stre- I don't want to say stress reliever, but almost like a stress reliever. Like, you just pick it up and play on the go and just, like, destroy, like, hundreds of enemies, and then you're, like, satisfied and put down your Switch, and you're like, ah, I feel better. Yeah, I there is definitely some... Satisfied. <laughs> there definitely is some satisfaction in that style. That's what I liked about Hyrule Warriors. In general, not my exact kind of game. I will be playing it and trying it. Um, but I think for me, like, what what made me even try Hyrule Warriors was my love for the Zelda property. I don't have the same love for the Fire Emblem property, but that's not to say, like, if the game is there, I don't care what characters it includes, right? I don't, you know, it can be humans, it can be guppies, it can be aliens, if the gameplay is there. So as long as they're... What, wait, to... what if it's rabbits? Still, ra I will still play if it's rabbits. I have rabbits no, warriors. <laughs> I am okay with rabbits. I mean, I'm hoping that they've evolved the gameplay since Hyrule Warriors, and if they can make it a more enjoyable, fun version of that, it, it's totally worth it. Um, I tried the Dragon Quest Heroes 2 demo and did not like that at all. So maybe Nintendo's uh, charm and Fire Emblem's charm can, can win me over. Um, but I feel like, in general, this is... I, I wonder how much it sells. I'm going to put it that way. Well, it'll be interesting to see how much it sells. You know, they're, they're coming out with the new Fire Emblem Echoes uh, for 3DS, and I, I fully expect that to sell well. How Fire Emblem Warriors does on Switch, I think, will be interesting and kind of help shape Nintendo's decisions going forward. I think it'll do well, and honestly, I'm more excited for a Fire Emblem game on, on Switch, like a full-on Fire Emblem game. That's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, that would definitely be cool. Yeah. Alrighty, so next up, Gabe, you are the spooky man, you get the spooky story. Justin Pabsek says, My spooky story of the week. I work in a guitar shop and a man with a cowboy hat walked in and asked me to show him a dulcimer. I showed him one for $200 and he bought it. I was building him into the, our system and his phone number began with a 666. After the transaction was over, he took the dulcimer and walked away, past my coworker playing guitar. My coworker stopped playing to tell the man, have a nice day, and as the man walked past, weird growling and whispering sounds began to resonate out of the speakers. The second the man stepped out of our shop, the noise stopped. I told my friend the guy's number was 666, and he started freaking out. Whoa, that's real spooky. This is intense, yeah. I don't know, if you, you probably should quit working at the dulcimer store. Gabe, as the resident witch expert, what kind of uh, paranormal effect do you think this man may be having on this uh, store? <laughs> and what do you I do to get rid of it? How do you break this curse? You break this curse by uh, going to GameStop and asking for any copy of a, a Mario game with a toad on the on the box art and burning all of those in your shop. Please don't actually do this; it, it's a fire hazard. Um, I, I I don't I don't know. I'm a witch expert. I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a demon expert Ooh, of any kind. Okay. If we have any demon experts in the comments, please give us suggestions for Justin and his uh, his affected store. Yeah, the, I, also, I think they need to. I think they need to go get a dulcimer and it, 
walk backwards through the tracing the man's like path. So like take the dulcimer out of the store and then walk backwards into the store and have the guy say have a nice day and then walk back to the counter and put uh, replace the dulcimer that they sold with a new dulcimer. Otherwise they will be haunted forever. That's my suggestion. All right, good call, Jake. Thank you for, for saving this man's life. 8-Bit Robin Hood says, the lower your expectations are, the better the presentation will be. And this is in reference to Nintendo's E3 plans. They revealed this week that they'll be doing their showcase, uh, a la their Direct, that focuses on Switch games, uh, Mario Odyssey, and 2017 releases, and maybe some future stuff, but focusing on that, and then their Treehouse presentations, uh, on the show floor that will have DS demos, uh, Switch demos, and then the tournaments, the Arms tournament and the Splatoon tournament. Now, there have been some years in the past where these showcases have kind of stunk, let's be real. Well, and so 8-Bit Robin Hood is saying the lower your expectations are, the better the presentation will be. And I guess I'm just going to ask you guys, where is your expectation meter set right now? This is kind of how I always go into it, though. You always go into it, like, because we're usually around each other at E3, and Gabe has been in recent years, but especially me and you for the past, like, four or five years, like, and it, you, like, freak out if there wasn't anything good or, like, about the trailers and how bad they are and unrevealing they are. And I'm just like, man, I'm just happy that they're showing new content. And that's kind of how I always go into these presentations. Not with any super high hopes, but just, like, take it for what it is and expect nothing but, like, be excited when they do show new things. Game? Yeah, my, my expectations has always remained tempered. I, I, I'm, I'm immune to hype. Gabe uh, is a stolid part. man. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm immune I'm immune to the hype buildup and the hype train uh, like that our current society like experiences. I don't get excited for like everything. Of course, one thing once these things like come out and like I recognize the quality, then yeah, I love it. And if they announce a Metroid at A3, yeah, I'll go crazy like everybody else. But I'm not expecting that. I don't expect Metroid to be shown. Would I like for it to? Of course, but. You know, it, it it goes back to the whole fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame on you type thing with Nintendo. You know, for for the last few years, uh, we, we've been to the last, what, three E3s together? Two E3s? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, uh, for every E3 that we're there together, you know, Nintendo has something weird at the very least going on. Last year, like, they didn't do a bad job. It's just that it was only Zelda. And, like, that was strange. Uh, the year before wasn't great. The year before that wasn't great. We all remember Cami from, you know, a, a few years before that. So... Gaby. Nintendo has a history of having lackluster E3s, to say the least. So, yeah, I'm not, like, crazy, like, hype for it. Gabe, your first piece of merch is going to be a shirt that says immune to the hype. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Hype vaccine? Um, I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm the one who gets incredibly hyped and incredibly overexcited, and then, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag. Sometimes I'm let down, sometimes I'm my expectations are met. I think what has me feeling confident about this one and why I'm not lowering my expectations is because of Nintendo's new philosophy that they've been ex ex executing on so far, right? Big games every month or so and keeping the consistency solid and strong for Switch. And so the fact that this is focusing on Switch, focusing on 2017, focusing on Mario, they are, they, you know, they confirm Mario Odyssey is playable, we're gonna get to play that. Um, ARMS comes out a couple days after E3. They will be showing off Fire Emblem Warriors and Xenoblade 2 and, and a few surprises, I'm sure. I feel confident that they are going to crush it because of what has transpired with the Switch so far this year. Had the Switch not been out yet or had the Switch kind of, you know, not been selling well, I'd be worried. But I feel like they have a focus and a direction uh, this time that may not have been present in years past. So I feel pretty darn pumped that... You know, you know, we could get there and the games could stink, but most likely Mario Odyssey is going to be awesome. Most likely Xenoblade 2 is going to be awesome. Most likely they will have a surprise or two. And my only concern is if they only show what we have seen. You know, there's a comment later we'll get to, like, is anything beyond 2017 going to be discussed? And I guess that's where my my expectations would be crushed. So Here's my expectation. And I'm not saying this is what I want. I'm not saying this is what I expect. Wait, did I say expectation? That That's what that means. That is an expectation, Gabe. Wait, wait, no, no, no. This isn't what like I actually think is gonna happen. But knowing Nintendo, I think the only new thing we see is the Mario Rabbids RPG. I think other than that, we see Fire Emblem, we see Xenoblade, we see Mario. I don't think we see anything else that like that's like new, really. A at least not first party. Only one way to find out. Wait really and see. I find that hard to believe, and we're going to be coming at you with an E3 uh, predictions video, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, Bulbasaur. Yeah, 
He's very sour. He's like a Sour Patch Kid Bulbasaur version. Says, Switch Force. It was probably just for the money. They saw the Switch was doing well, so they ported it as fast and had no time to port online. This is in reference to NBA Playgrounds um, and quick cash-ins because of the Switch's success. And I thought it was interesting because I didn't think about it that way until Bulbasaur pointed it out that are there some of these smaller studios that, you know, see the golden opportunity of like there's this void of games and we could cash in if we just do, you know, a rush job and, and do we think this is something that we're going to see more of later this year? Mm-mm. You think this is, you think Playgrounds is the anomaly rather than... Well, I, I don't think that, that that... I'm not saying that's not the reason, but how quick, like, when did they see the success and how quickly did they port it over? True. Like, you know what I, like I don't think there's enough time there. Uh, if that makes sense. Like, we didn't know that the Switch was going to be successful when they were presumably already working on NBA, uh, NBA Playgrounds for the Switch. I feel like they were already working on it before it became successful, and it just happened to be successful. And hmm. they they just wanted to, like, throw it out. But I, I do believe it is a rushed, like, port, but not in the, in the sense that, like, oh, that's super popular, let's go make it for Switch when we weren't going to make it for Switch. Well, like, that, well that, in this specific situation... I would normally 100% agree with you. My only thing is that NBA Playgrounds was announced on April 5th. NBA Playgrounds came out on May 9th. You that is an ins- insanely short time period. So is there a chance that it was concocted somewhere after they saw the initial sales? Or even if not the initial sales, the initial void. I, I just wonder if there are some studios that are like, oh my god, let's get on the Switch bandwagon and it's it's producing shoddier ports. I'd say in general, we've seen solid ones. You know, obviously Nintendo d- did a great job with theirs. Um, regardless though, I hope that companies take note that Playgrounds is being sort of pinned up as like, don't do this. So whatever the reason was, however it went down, I really hope that we get solid ports. Uh, even if they are trying to, c- to catch the, the Switch wave, like do it well. That's what's gonna reward you with the sales and, and the cash that you desire. Taylor5393 says, uh, Played this game all day on the Switch. In docked, it looks crisp and the gameplay is fun. It is a little blurry in handheld, but not enough to stop me from playing in that mode. I'm enjoying it so far, and I'm not even into basketball that much. Um, again, in reference to NBA Playgrounds, it looks very blurry <laughs> in, in handheld mode, so I disagree uh, with him. Um, I don't, I don't want to play that game in handheld mode ever, uh, but that's just me. Um, I, li- I like that, though. You know, he talked about how... He doesn't really even like basketball that much, but he got into this, and I think that's one cool thing about Switch, people taking it with them, using that hybrid style. I think people are more willing to try titles that they may not normally, you know, invest in if it's a couch and a, and a TV experience. Mm-hmm. And I still think NBA Playgrounds is a solid game. It's just a bad port on the Switch. Yeah, it's... I was listening to uh, to Giant Bomb discuss it, and the more that they talked about how NBA Jam does this better and this better, I was like, gosh, why couldn't we have just gotten NBA Jam? But I still think it is fun, and I think it's cool that right now there is a real eclectic variety of titles on Switch. Because, I mean, if you look at it, Zelda to Mario Kart to NBA Playgrounds to Shifty to Graceful Explosion Machine to Tumble Seed, like a real... It's such variety, right? It's not... It's not like, you know, oh, a bunch of sports games and some generic shooters to to dot out, you know, the launch window. It's really what? a nice kind of mix. Now we have Minecraft on there as well, so it's just another, like, different one. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm liking the library so far. I just, I, I want the bigger games, and of course they are coming. Uh, right. Arms, is, Arms is coming, you know, the, uh, the last day of E3 or something, that Friday. So, yes. Uh, so... You know, th- that's another big one. Then, of course, we have Splatoon, and, and who knows? Nintendo needs something for the summer. We all assume it's going to be Mario Rabbids, probably. Or, or Fire Emblem. Yeah, or, fire, or something, or both. Who knows? Dr. Reverend Alan Woods, PhD, so we know that he's done his research, says, Come on, guys, stop the madness. No more port talking. Just let those games come to the Switch as classic games or virtual console or eShop at a lower price. And we had a number of these sentiments echoed throughout the week about, hey, like, don't even entertain the idea of Wii U ports. Don't give Nintendo that option. We want them to do new stuff. Which I think is unfair because every other company seems to be able to get away with it pretty decently. And no, I mean, yeah, sure, people complain, I guess. But it, it, <laughs> the, the top selling Mario Kart of all time is now a port. So and I think it's a, that weird situation because of where Wii U ended up, right? Like, if Wii U was as successful as Wii, then. Okay, double dipping seems 
more egregious, but I feel here like opening up that the, the best titles of that library and really like settle that aside. To me, here's here's the deal. Either you get no games and wait for the new ones, or you get some really top tier ports as you wait for the new ones. And that's where I think I differ is from that some, really some their, this, this thought. Is that really how the plan the plan works though? Because I mean it, it takes some effort to port over games. And like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a boosted port. It's not just a pure like copy and paste. So I ju I just don't think if Mario Kart 8 Deluxe doesn't come out, I don't think like oh all of a sudden we get Splatoon 2 in 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 April. Well yeah, I mean it totally alters their game plan because they had Mario Kart 8 in their game plan from the beginning. So I don't know. I feel like they, they don't need to do a ton of scooping into the the bottom of the ice cream jar to for Wii U games. I think like a Smash Brothers port or something like that, like more like multiplayer type games would be good. But I think that they have proven that they can come up with enough new good games. And I guess if you're gonna dot the middle areas with ports and you have that availability and like that that time and it's not gonna distract or detract effort going into new games, then I, I don't see a problem with it. Well, the thing is, Retro's not working on ports. Like, Retro's working on their game, and the people that are working on the ports are probably people that weren't working on big new games to begin with. So, I feel like, hey, put these things out for the people that didn't play them. I, yeah. didn't, play a whole, I didn't play a whole bunch of Hyrule Warriors, so I, I would totally play it on Switch if it was there. Um, you, like, I get it. Ports can be annoying, but like I touched on earlier, other companies get away with it all the time. Well, and as long as it's not... And I guess we don't know the specifics, but as long as it's not swallowing all the resources, like Naughty Dog didn't put out Last of Us Remastered in exchange for like a brand new IP. If they didn't put that out, you would have just waited until Uncharted 4. Might it have shifted Uncharted 4 up a couple months? Sure, but at the end of the day, I'd rather get a game in April and a game in November than no game in April and a game in September. You know what I mean? What? Like, I guess for me, I'd rather have a more full library with more choices because you don't have to buy any of the ports you don't want to, but for people that are interested and people that missed out on Wii U or people that want that, you know, addition to their library, Basically, you just want to rain down Switch games all the yes. time. Switch rain. Who the, needs the, chocolate the one thing, The one thing I do agree with, with the doctor here is... If they just put Wii games on like the eShop, like or as like classics or whatever that I can just like buy and download, like the actual just like Wii game on the Switch, then that's fine. I don't care if it's a port. I, I want to play Hy uh, Hyrule Warriors. Put the game there. If it's on eShop um, through Virtual Console through whatever you want to call it, then that's fine. It doesn't need to be like an upres port or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> get the Virtual Console going and then we can talk. For now, though, I'd be totally okay if. Hey, Mario Maker and Smash Bros. were hitting this summer. Yeah. Show Shotgun Tornado. That is a very violent and vehement name. I would love a portable dock. As a person who bought one of the, the smaller travel cases for the Switch, it's silly that in order to bring my Switch to a friend's house to play on their TV, I still need an additional large bag to throw the dock into. Maybe I just have buyer's remorse. I don't think you have large? buyer's remorse at all. I think you large? have a fair point there. You need a large bag. To, <laughs> I don't know, man. The the dock isn't that big. You don't even need to throw it in a bag. Just carry it in your hand. Like, the thing isn't that big. It weighs almost nothing. Buy two know. Switch case travel cases and put the dock in one and the Switch in the other. And then use a big rubber band to rubber band them together. I yeah, think I that I the buyer's know. remorse is going a little far. But I do think that... Uh, I do think making a like totally portable version would be super cool, and I do think that most people are pretty intrigued by those 3D printed travel docks. I think that's something that there is, there's something there, and I think whether they're you know ever incorporated into Nintendo's official accessory library or if it just remains something that's an Etsy uh, accessory, that's fine. But I, I do think there is a market for people who would love to have some smaller, simpler way to connect this. I just think it's interesting that people are like so like up in arms about the dock is so big. When if like you want to take your PlayStation or your Xbox, you'd have to take like a huge backpack just in order to play anything at all, like docked or undocked. Sure. So like, I guess it's like sort of like the, the, you know, like looking over the edge and then wanting to go jump off. Like you can see that it's like tr travel and portable and, and stuff like that, but you want it to be even more so like travel and portable. And I mean, that backpack that I did a review on is like expensive, but it's super nifty. And like it fits my laptop and stuff too. So like I use it even when I'm not carrying my dock and switch around. So. I mean, yeah, I, I guess, again, it's sort of what we talked about in the Travel Docs video, like, it's a nice thing for the people who really want it, that they can mod it themselves or buy one off of Etsy or something like that, 
but I don't know that's like a necessity that like oh god they have to redo the whole switch and re-release the switch with a smaller dock. Gotcha. I I don't think Nintendo will actually ever make it happen, but I think it's it's the people who view this as a portable first that want the smaller dock, and the people that view it as a console first, more like us, I guess, that then are. Well, if it's a portable, then you shouldn't want to play it on a TV anyways. Well, then it would just be nice to have the option to do so in a small form factor. Either I know, way, I think, you don't I think take those a 3DS over to someone's house or Vita and be like, I'm plugging this into your TV because it's my portable. I don't know. I think well, it's that's, like, the, that's why you bought a Switch. If you if you didn't want that, then you could have just not bought. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like wanting a smaller, more convenient way to connect to the TV is not like some blasphemous. I know, but the dock isn't like desire. the same size as the Switch. Anyways, moving on. Awesome G46 says, you know what we really what we really need? Mario Strikers 3, Mario Superstar Baseball 2, Mario Ultra Tennis Port. Haha, <laughs> no ports. Uh, FIFA. I'm one of the few Nintendo... F oh, I'm one of the Nintendo fans that actually like FIFA. Nah, nothing wrong with that. Um, I agree, uh, especially with uh, Mario Strikers. That, that would be great. Yeah, Mario sports games are, are some of the best. And I think this was in reference to, you know, EA talking about they wanted to bring more of their titles and, and kind of our concern, like, you know, their CEO, Andrew Wilson, said he views it as like a new like a new market so does that mean we're going back to all play style of madden and, and things of that sort fifa well, madden madden isn't coming to the switch as far as we can tell they, they announced uh uh the goat um tom brady on the cover and they said it's coming to uh xbox one and playstation 4 no mention of switch at all so that doesn't seem like that's happening sure as of right now no i mean fifa is that's been confirmed but yeah i, I would love to see the other mario sports games hit the switch i think those i think those would provide a better experience than a gimped Madden or a Gimps, you know, 2K18 to me is going to be the interesting one because we've seen Playgrounds. If 2K18 can do a full-on 2K experience on Switch, then bring me all of them. Then I want Madden, then I want FIFA, then I want NHL, then I want MLB. But if if NBA 2K18 is, is like a half version, then I'm all, give me like the Mario games. I would rather have great Mario sports titles than sort of half you know, real sports titles. Well, well the, th the thing about, um, like, Madden, it, it, it's running on the Frostbite engine, and I don't think the Frostbite engine is going to work on the Switch. Mm -hmm. So that that's probably not happening. It, it, we're not getting a full Madden. Like, that's I think it's doable. Graphically, I, I, maybe not, but, like, doable totally. Again, 2K18, if, if 2K18 can do it, Madden can do it. And that's what we just need to wait and see. 2K18 isn't using the Frostbite engine. That's very, very different. Uh, sure, but I'm saying you could do a version of Madden that's not like swipe the screen to throw the ball. Like you could, the Switch can't handle that. Yeah, but then again, it does become a, it comes with, becomes a different version of Madden. It's not going to be the same thing. I guess as long as the mechanics are there, I'd be excited. But yeah, either way, please give us Mario Strikers. That's that that is my secret. I know it will not happen, but would go crazy if it did happen at E3 announcement. Um, another one that I think would be awesome for E3 comes from TM Sparks, who says PVZ Garden Warfare on the Switch actually sounds pretty good. It could even rival Splatoon if they do it right. That to me is like the another ideal fit. If EA does want to partner with Switch, if EA does want to invest in Nintendo. Give us Garden Warfare. Even if it's just a rehash of two, that's like such the, the ideal game. There's so many options, solo, multiplayer, and all the character progression, all the unlocks, all the sticker packs. It's like the, it's like made for Switch before they even knew Switch was made. I agree. I would be super all over this title. Griffin Lysuk, Lysuk? I think a more enhanced dock would be cool, like a dock that enhances the gameplay and abilities of the Switch, similar to the Razer Core. The Razer Core is connected to, to lower power Razer laptops by USB-C and has a separate graphics card in it, which then externally boosts the graphics. And Nintendo could make a dock that uses this tech to enhance the dock's performance. It, I'd be super into that. There you go, Gabe. There you go. You want the, the Frostbite engine? Boom. Give me that separate well, graphics card. <laughs> This is interesting on, on, on a couple of fronts here because NVIDIA is partnered with Nintendo uh, for the Switch. Uh, there is a, an NVIDIA chip in there. Um, and the Razer Core, while not NVIDIA directly, like uh, it, it works with like a lot of NVIDIA graphics cards. Like, you know, people put like 1080 like or 1080 Ti's in like laptops with this thing. So I don't think it happens, but it's not impossible. 
But then the, yeah. the issue becomes then you become, you have dock only games, which is weird and kind of defeats the purpose of the Switch. But Nintendo is willing to do that. Power Pack on N64, new 3DS. Granted, there was like no titles, but they they have been willing to do that in the past. So while unlikely, I don't think it's out of the realm of the possibility that eventually we do see some sort of souped up dock incorporated to up the power of the Switch. And have dock only games. Because we talked about this before, like then you think they will have a split where they have dock only games. I mean, they already have handheld only games, so. Or they have a handheld only game. Or a couple, so. Or one or two, something like that. I, I don't know why it couldn't go the other way around, so. Oh, yeah, I think it works either one or two ways. More of this style where it's like, hey, it's an, an attachment and an upgrade or they eventually switch 2.0 and it's just same exact concept, much shorter uh, cycle. And it, I mean, you're gonna split your market at some point, but like I said, Nintendo hasn't been afraid to do that previously. So would they? They could. Do I think it's the best? No, but I I guess it's, it's all about like, how does this porting situation work out? And that's why I'm just so interested in NBA 2K18 because we really have to see if a company is committed to bringing a PS4 and Xbox One level game to the Switch, what can they do? And we're not going to know that, I feel, until in, until 2K18. I, I don't think there's any other games coming out before that, and, and that's going to really be sort of the, the, is, the, the two, line in the sand. Is 2K18 before FIFA? That... FIFA should be first. So, yeah, I guess FIFA... Yeah, well, I guess we'll find out. I mean, at E3, we'll find out how does FIFA play on Switch... And those two games, I guess, then, right? Like, that's going to kind of be the, the, the earmark. And do you think Nintendo would be more likely to sell an attachment or it, it just a, a new system? Can, can the answer be neither? But you have to pick one. More likely. Attachment. Like, they're, they're going to play it safe, man. This, this thing yeah. is doing well. They're, they're not going to want to, like, do anything crazy to piss people off. Like, they... They haven't had success in a while. Like, the entire lifespan of the Wii, the Wii U, and we love Nintendo, obviously, but the entire lifespan of the Wii U was one failure after another. Mm -hmm. So now that they have success again and, and they're seeing positive growth, they're not going to want to rock the boat too much. They're not. There's no way that, like, in two years, they're like, oh, hey, new console. Like, no. The, especially if this thing keeps selling. Uh, they, they have to play it safe. I, I don't think we get either, to be honest. I do think it's definitely an interesting conversation. I think it's something that I'm sure they are considering. Um, by the way, NBA did come out first uh, the last couple of years, so it will be NBA 2K18. Um, but yeah, Griffin, I think that's a really good point. I think it's one to keep our eyes out for, especially as Sony and Microsoft do these incremental upgrades. Will Nintendo be enticed to do the same? All right, so Intel Core Gaming, ICG, says... When it's docked, it is the world's hottest console. Literally, it does get very, very hot. We saw a couple people say that, like, yeah, like that. This is becoming their issue. Like Joy-Con stuff fixed, blah blah blah. Scratching, not really a problem. But that heat in the dock is something that they're getting worried about. Yeah, I guess another reason does. to get a portable dock. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Let the let the vents vent. Um. Yeah. I, I I've experienced this. It does get hot when it's docked. Mine gets a little hot, but I've never felt like oh boy, like gotta Mine throw that one hot. in the pool. No, don't throw it in the pool. That's a terrible <laughs> idea. I'm just a little. Oh boy, confused. gotta throw that in the freezer. I'm just a little confused as why <laughs> they they thought. Just a, oh a pure... boy, gotta throw that in the small winter's night. Just put it in front of a fan. In the fan. Just, put it in the fan. That's as far as you need to go. Okay. Yeah, but it does get hot. Um, it, I don't know if it's gonna lead to like long term effects. Like, will the lifespan of your switch be like cut short by the fact that it gets hot so often? Nobody knows. But I think it's important to pay attention to. Um, and I, I mean, I have to imagine Nintendo isn't known for like hardware failure, so it may be able to 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 bear a little bit of of that burn. Sure. Except when it bends your switch. Well, that's I don't know that that's really a prevalent problem. I mean, this is this is, we've seen this in a couple of videos. I don't know how widespread it is. I just thought it was interesting to note that a number of people have been telling us this week that their switches feel like they're getting real hot and they want a venting dock. Mad Cat, wait, no. Well, they can't save you anymore because they're not a thing anymore, right? But Mad Cat's... Power save. A. Yeah, Power A can save you. There you go. 
All right, wrapping things up and it helps us look forward is Wolfgang 630 saying, so people don't get confused, but a Nintendo Spotlight at E3 is Nintendo's new name for their video presentation instead of digital event. And it says they'll focus on 2017 Switch games, which means they can announce 2018 games. Doesn't sound like 3DS games will be part of the Spotlight. Instead, those are gonna be part of the Trios presentations on the show floor. So, we are less than a month away from E3, less than a month away from the showcase or the spotlight, I guess. It's going to focus on 2017 Switch games, it's going to have an emphasis on Mario Odyssey, but they left the door open for 2018 titles. And we'll be back with an E3 predictions video, and we'll be gathering all your predictions for a future special comment for us. Uh, but in the meantime, just wanted to let everybody know uh, that there is there is the option for 2018. I saw a big battle raging on Neo Gap of people being like, no, it's only 2017. No, it could be 2018. But I think we can all three safely say that they are not shutting the door on announcements for longer, uh, you know, Switch games that are farther out there. I do like the fact, though, that the spotlight is Switch, and 3DS uh, is saved for sort of their their other stuff. I uh, the, gr the great battle of NeoGAF 2017, where we argued about whether there would be 2018 games on the Switch presentation. Yeah, it was I, quite I, the heated battle. I, I find it humorous <laughs> that people spend their, that much time on it. Like, just wait and see what happens. Your your arguing is not going to change what they do. <laughs> Jake, that makes too much sense. Stop the, it. The good news is, Jake, that you will get to be part of that, not waiting and and not just just sitting back because we are going to make predictions soon. Until that time, I predict that all of you will have a fantastic. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were gonna special announce that I was going to be part of their spotlight. <laughs> Jake is going to be part of the special <laughs> guest special announcement. <laughs> Oh, hey, man. do you do you remember the MC that they had at, at Pack South that was yes. hosting the, yes. the, the the tournament? I want Jake to do that. I want him to have a bag that he just like takes merchandise out of, and he asks people, "Oh, you know, who has the most Zelda tattoos on them?" And Who's the biggest game them, fan? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> and then you give them something cool. We become an MC at E3. We will find out in less than 30 days. All of us will be at E3, as mentioned previously. We'll be bringing you uh, all the big stuff from the big show and the little hey, stuff, too. Hey, stop telling people where I'm going to be. You're going to be at E3 right stop next to me. That. And nope. if you want to give Gabe a little noogie, you'll know where to the find hordes, him. The hordes of uh, Gabe fan club members are going to just... They're gonna trounce us. If you if us. you are planning on seeing Gabe, please bring him some sort of toad uh, trinket. That's all we ask of you. Don't do that. Please do. <laughs> and also, please have a great week. Please keep the comments and the interaction coming. We love the community here. We love you guys at Switch Force, and we are so proud uh, to be a part of it with you all. So until Comment Force 15, until that E3 bonus Comment Force, uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic week, and until next time, all together now. Three, two, one, switch force out.